Recently appointed as Bayern Munich's new manager, Vincent Kompany has hit the ground running in his first preseason. The club has thrived under his leadership, with Kompany instilling a strong, disciplined style of play. Bayern's impressive preseason performances suggest that Kompany's influence is quickly taking hold, setting the stage for an exciting competitive season ahead. Here is how you can recreate Bayern's preseason tactics under Kompany. The formation to Vincent Kompany is insignificant. It's more about how the team play, how they build their attacks from back to front. Now, for a large majority of their preseason, they have set out in a 4 2 3 1. The first game versus Tottenham, it was that with a more natural number nine, whereas the second game where they ended up winning 3 2, it was more so a 4 3 3. But you would still see strong remnants and you know combination plays between the likes of Jamal Musiala as well as Thomas Muller combining in that number 10 and number nine role. Through the first four games of Bayern Munich's preseason under the likes of Vincent Company, we have seen elements of his tactical approach aligning itself with the tactical vision being set to wing play. Now, of course, Vincent Company does like to turn care and tweak a few elements to his tactical approach as well as his lineups and formations, and the tactical vision being set to wing play can allow you as the user to do the same. Now, essentially, as well, we have seen a lot of their good attacks stem from those wide areas through good combination play between the fullbacks and the wingers, but also the central midfielders rotating into those wider zones, looking to stretch the play and open and generate space in those central zones. Onto the defense and the defensive style, and I have set this to press after possession loss. Now, quite a few times so far this preseason, we have seen Bayern's aggressive press catch the opposition out. In both games versus Spurs, they were able to capitalize on the mistakes that Spurs made whilst playing out from the back looking to press high, and they couldn't really cope with Bayern's aggressive implemented press, and that led to Spurs conceding quite a few goals. Now, I do think that Vincent Kompany will incorporate certain elements of his Burnley tactics into the current Bayern Munich side. Now, essentially, Burnley would look to regain their shape and structure, and only really once the opposition passed over the halfway line, we would see them initiate those pressing traps and sequences. Now, essentially against a potential Man City or Real Madrid in the Champions League, or maybe a Borussia Dortmund in the Bundesliga, or any other team that's really good on the ball and capable of progressing the ball further forward, we might see company look for a bit more of a reserved role. They would still be pressing involved, but a slight more reserved role where they focus on their shape and their structure, making it very hard to break down and therefore initiating those pressing traps and sequences. So therefore, I would say you can alternate between a pressure on heavy touch approach or even a press after possession loss. The team's width I have set to 75, and this will aid with the aggressive pressing nature that you are trying to instill in this side. You are trying to match up in all areas of the field, looking to aggressively press the opposition the minute they are on the ball, and making sure that you are trying to cover any potential passing lanes and trying to intercept and break up the play. Vincent Company does want his centre backs playing higher up the field, pushing that back line further up the pitch, looking to try and pin the opposition back in their own half. And that is why I have set the depth to 85. Now it does vary and depend on what you are trying to play with your defensive style. For the pressing off to possession loss, I would highly recommend an 85 depth. But if you are looking to switch it up and play more of a pressure on heavy touch approach, I would then drop it down to a 65, implementing a higher mid block, but still a mid block nonetheless, looking to just try and protect your back line from any potential killer passes from the opposition. So far in the preseason, we've seen Bayern Munich's offensive approach be all about trying to control the different phases of play looking to build the ball out from the back at their own pace, at their own rate, and look to try and control possession as much as possible. And that is why for the builder play, I have set this to slow build up. Quite often so far in the preseason, we've seen either a 3-2 shape or a 2-3 shape formulate, and that is more so with the right back dropping quite deep, dropping into that back line, helping formulate that three back system, or dropping deep into the midfield zones and helping formulate that midfield three in order to try and generate those extra passing options when the goalkeeper is trying to initiate that first phase build up and that is something that you are trying to do on a consistent basis having the likes of Manuel Neuer pass the ball into one of the center backs or one of the full backs and then progress it further forward the likes of Joshua Kimmich will be very important in that first phase build up because he is the dictator he is the chief creator he is the conductor of this offensive build up and this platform that you are trying to generate the chance creation I have set to balance. Now, this will help the team maintain its natural formation, but it will also incorporate the possession-based brand of football that you are trying to play, as well as forward runs and direct passing. Now, there are certain elements that we have seen of each individual chance creation base in their preseason. We've seen the likes of Leon Goretzka, when he has played, make those runs from deep into the box, getting on the end of crosses or cutbacks and putting the ball in the back of the nets. We've also seen the likes of Joshua Kimmich, running from deep, getting onto the edge of the box, looking to try and help facilitate the attacking play for the side. But we've also seen them maintain the ball quite a bit, dominate possession, look to try and rotate it as much as possible, and then 
wait and press and probe for their opportunity before executing their offensive play. So we have seen moments like that. We've also seen Matisse Tell make those runs in behind, looking to try and exploit the opposition's high line. So he's made those runs in behind, and when they found him with a through ball pass or an over the top ball pass, he has been able to, you know, more or less exploit the opposition. And that is more or less where the direct play comes from. So you want to try and incorporate all three elements into your attacking play. You'll see here for the width, I have set this to 60 as this goes hand in hand with the wing play approach, as Bayern Munich do try and balance out their attacking outlets. Yes, they try and stem their attacks mainly from those wider areas, and you will have sufficient play and build up in those wider zones, but they try and balance their attacking runs and more or less their attacking sequences from the middle to the wider channels and that is why 60 along with certain player instructions does allow you to successfully recreate company's style of play for the players in the box i have set this to a very balanced five as company doesn't want to flood the box with too many attacking options he's quite happy to have two or three in that attacking zone and have two or three or maybe even four players on the edge of the area trying to facilitate or even be that counter pressing measure that he is trying to implement for the side Finally, the corners and the free kicks should be set to four. So moving on to the individual player roles and instructions, starting off at the front with the striker in Thomas Muller. Now, essentially, Muller and Musiala worked so well together in that second game versus Spurs, where you would see the one drop and the other one press, and the one player is the number nine and the other one drop is the number 10. So you want to try and successfully create that tandem, and more so having them in a 4-2-3-1 does allow you to do this very effectively. Now, for the likes of Thomas Muller, he was allowed to drift in and out of those central zones, looking to drop into the midfield at times, combining with the likes of Musiala, Pavlovich, as well as Kimmich. And that is why I have deployed him as a false nine, paired up with the defensive supports being set to come back. And this will have him drop very effectively into those deeper pockets of space. And then finally, you also want him to be set to aggressive interceptions. The instructions for Jamal Musiala going forward should be set to maintaining a basic defensive support as well as a balanced crossing run. Now, this will help him at times overlap the number nine, get into those more attacking zones, almost playing as a second striker, looking to get into the box and attack the potential crosses or cutbacks. But it can also provide him the opportunities to stay on the edge of the area, drop into those deeper pockets of space and combine very effectively with the deeper lying midfielders. The most important instruction for him is going to be the free roaming role. You do want him to drift all over the place, helping, you know, drift into those pockets of space, helping unlock the opposition's backline defense and being able to execute in those tight, confined areas. And then finally, just like with Thomas Muller, he will also be set to maintaining an aggressive interceptions approach. Out wide now to your left midfielder and Matisse Tull has had a fantastic preseason being deployed largely as that left midfielder. Now, I know in the game that they won 14-1, he was playing as a striker and he scored a lot of goals. But so far versus Spurs, he's been deployed out wide. And I think that company might favor him as a left midfielder going forward, almost as an inside forward looking to cut inside and pop off shots. And I think that he is a large reason why they are looking to shift out one of Gnabry or the likes of Komen. And it's looking like it's going to be Komen out on loan. So you do want both of your wider midfielders to try and drop back and support the fullbacks because obviously the fullbacks will be very important in attacking. So sometimes you might see the fullbacks not get back in time and that is when you require these two wider players to drop back into that defensive space. It will also allow them to have a slightly deeper starting position when you are trying to build out your attacks. What I have seen from the likes of Tell is he does like to cut inside. He does like to operate as an inside forward looking to cut in from that left side and get the ball into his more dominant right foot and then pop off shots or try and facilitate the offensive approach on the ed edge of the box. The support runs is set to balance as he does like to come short at times, link up with the slightly more attacking midfielders or even the inverted Guerrero, or he can look to break in behind and use his pace to bind Munich's advantage, looking to try and exploit the opposition's backline with their highline approach by making those runs in behind. Then finally, the interception should be set to aggressive and because he is more naturally a striker, he does look to get into those more attacking zones at times. And in order to successfully create that, you want him to be set to get into the box. Now onto your right midfielder of Gnabry and he's seen more of as a natural right winger that can attack the half spaces. And we have seen a sufficient amount of that so far in the preseason. Now he'll be set to come back on defense, just like with Tell, looking to help assist the likes of Bowie or potentially Stanisic, whoever you have deployed as your right back. The chance creation along with the support runs will both be set to balance, allowing him to attack the half spaces in certain moments, cut inside a bit more, or potentially hug the touch lines and act as more of a natural winger looking to supply crosses or offensive chances from those slightly wider areas. He will also be set to a balanced support as he does like to break in behind every now and then. He's not the quickest of players, but he can look to try and exploit the opposition with those occasional runs in behind, or just like with Matisse Tell, he can look to come a bit shorter and combine with 
either the midfielders, the, the deeper lying midfielders, or potentially the likes of Jamal Musiala, who will be looking to drift all over the place and help facilitate the offense. And then finally, he will be set to maintaining a balanced crossing run, looking to get into the box in certain moments, or staying on the edge of the area and trying to whip in crosses or offensive opportunities and then aggressive interceptions should be applied. Your double pivot of Joshua Kimmich as well as Pavlovich have done incredibly well so far in the preseason. Now, they will both be set to maintaining the cut pass hands defensive behavior approach, looking to try and break up any offensive play or offensive rhythm that the opposition's midfield might be looking to establish. Now, essentially for the likes of Joshua Kimmich, he does have a bit more attacking freedom than Pavlovich, so he will be allowed to roam forward and try and initiate the attacking outlets or facilitate the attacks on the edge of the area. The interception should be set to normal and you do want him to be the deep line playmaker of the two as Joshua Kimmich has always been able to drop between the defenders, collect the ball under the press, under the pressure from the opposition and be able to lay it off and help establish that first phase in the builder play. And that is something that Pavlovich will essentially do as well but more so the likes of Joshua Kimmich will be that deciding factor in that first phase of the builder play. He will also be set to cover the wing just like with Pavlovich who will more or less maintain a similar role cover the wing, cut pass ends, but he will be set to stay back while attacking. He looks to try and break up the play as much as he possibly can, looking to try and shield the back line, and he'll also be the deepest lying midfielder when everybody is attacking and getting forward. Your two fullbacks in Guerrero and Bowie will have, again, very similar roles with Guerrero being allowed to maintain a mixed run type, allowing him to overlap or underlap or invert into the midfield zones, whereas Bowie or Stanisic tend to hug the touchlines and run up and down at the right-hand space. But both are going to be set to join the attack. You want them bombing on consistently up and down that wide right or wide left space. So that is why I have set them to that, as well as you want them to step up and impose themselves on the opposition wide players. As you'll see for Bowie, he will set, be set to join the attack and overlap, as he does tend to get forward, and when he does get forward, overlap the likes of Serge Gnabry, forcing Gnabry into the half space or the interior space and trying to attack that, whereas he will look to attack the wider area. The two center backs in Upa Meccano as well as Kim Min Jae will both be set to the base set of instructions. You don't need to make too many changes about it. They will essentially be very important in that build up play, looking to be able to play from the back. And even the likes of Hiroki Aito was going to be very important. Of course, he's broken his foot and he will be out for an extended amount of time. But it is essential that the center backs are calm and composed under pressure, being able to collect the ball from Emmanuel Neuer under the press, under the pressure. And we have seen this established under Julian Nagelsmann, even the likes of a Thomas Tuchel last season. Playing out from the back was fundamental to how Bayern Munich established their attacking patterns of play. So Upa Meccano and Kim Min Jae are both suited to this role and the system. They'll both be important in trying to initiate that higher line. And they are both very good when it comes to implementing that recovery pace in order to try and cut out any potential opposition attacks. And then finally, it goes without saying, but the role of the goalkeeper in Manuel Neuer should be set to come for crosses as well as be a sweeper keeper. I always say that when you are looking to implement a high line, which in this case you are, a sweeper keeper role is supposed to be implemented and that will help him sweep up just in behind your back line. Now, it doesn't always work in FC24. In fact, it very rarely works in FC24, but I would always just recommend you implement it into your instructions as well as, of course, Comfort Crosses having him be very aerially dominant when trying to claim those aerial, you know, threats. Now, essentially, Manuel Neuer is the definition of calm and composed when under pressure, when looking to find that quick pass into the sense backs or slightly wide into the fullbacks or even slightly further up the field into the striker or potentially the higher phase midfielders. So he is very good at being able to find those quick passes when under pressure. And there we go, my dudes. That is how I would successfully go ahead and implement Vincent Company's tactics from Bayern Munich's preseason so far into FC24. I do hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you don't mind smashing the like button down below, it does a lot for the channel as well as we are on the road to 10,000. So if you're new to the channel and you like the content and all that good stuff, I would absolutely appreciate it if you could be a part of the journey to 10K. That would be fantastic, people. Um, also, we have a Discord, the Brom Squad Gaming Discord server. We chat everything FC24, everything FC25, and everything real-life football. We talk transfers and all that good stuff. So if you are interested, go ahead. The link will be down below, um, and I would welcome you with open arms. Anyways, we are going to hop on into some gameplay where we will discuss these tactics in further detail. Okay, people, onto the gameplay now, and uh, Thomas Mann is prepared to kick things off. Bayern Munich versus SSV Olam, I, I think. But basically, right, the reason I've, I've, I'm playing up against this side is we have seen so far in the preseason Bayern Munich haven't really played anybody that's 
that's well known. Of course, Tottenham, they played them twice, but that was about it. They've played mainly second, third, and ninth division teams. And so I, I went to the third division of German football, pressed randomized, and came up with SSV ULM. Alum. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But the point is, though, it's more or less to establish Vincent Company's style of play, have the players adjust and adapt, and that is more or less what we're trying to do here with the game players. We have turned the ball over, and it has led to a swift attack, although Kimmich and the boys are looking to get the ball back. And that was almost, that was almost, that was almost. We've done it, though. We've done it. Some great pressing. We've won the ball back. Playing that box-to-box -box roll. Gnabry attacking the half spaces, lays it off into the likes of Thomas Muller, then lays it off into the more attacking inside forward of Matisse Tull, who stings the palms of the goalkeeper, and they hoof it long. But he is about to be an absolute goat in the midfield. You can just you can just tell by how good he could potentially be. Although we've seen the likes of Guerrero, he's making that run. Guerrero, he's come away at the ball, he's taken a shot, and he's popped off another shot. And unfortunately. The goalkeeper makes another save. Just looking to play it back to the goalkeeper. Looking to invite that press. Plays into Kimmich. Kimmich further forward now. Musiala. Pavlovich. Pavlovich has ventured forward. He lays it off into Matisse Tal, who will look to put the burners on. He'll look to cut inside. Into the box. Lays it back. Into... The likes of Thomas Muller, who absolutely leathers it past the goalkeeper. Nothing to really celebrate. Of course, it's only a friendly. Of course, it's only pre-season. But 1-0 to Bayern Munich. A fantastic cutback from Matisse Tell to the striker. There we go. Serge Gnabry. Bang, bang, and bang. Great ball. Matisse Tell getting in between the lines there. Into Jamal Musiala. Musiala looking to attack the half space. He's done so beautifully. And he's been played in by the likes of Thomas Muller. And he gets the ball rolling with the second goal on the day. 30 minutes gone by. 2-0 now to FC Bayern München. And yeah, it's, it's about to be a beat down. I'm not going to lie. But I hope you guys are watching the patterns of play. The way that Musiala and the likes of Thomas Muller are combining. One dropping, one going forward. The likes of Matisse Tal inverting, playing as an inside forward. And we have seen he does tend to drift quite a lot along that front line. And by him cutting inside, it allows him to do the same more or less actions and run patterns. Kimmich, he's looking for that long ball out wide. The great switch of play into Matisse Tell. We will look to play it in there to Muller, who looks to play it further forward. Uh, almost, almost. Press, press, and press some more, boys. Although, we've got the likes of Rafael Guerrero. He is attacking. He is going to look at... That was a terrible ball. Rafael Guerrero. 40 minutes gone by. It's still 2-0. And uh, we are definitely dominating proceedings here. Gnabry. Lays it into Kimmich. Kimmich breaking forward nicely. He does find the likes of Thomas Muller. He does look to cut it back into Matisse Tell, and he struck it straight at the goalkeeper, which does lead to a corner kick. Okay, Kimmich sets to take it. He's taken it at the near post, and that time it does lead to a fantastically well-taken headed effort, and I do hope that in FC 25, Nabry has uh, his actual face scan. That would be great too. I mean, he does have it, but... You know what I'm saying, the, the, the updated version at least. But a, a great cross from Kimmich, a great near post flick on, and unfortunately, 3-0. So if we take a look at the possession stats at the break, we have maintained 66% possession to SSV Olum 1846's 34%. Uh, we've had eight ball recoveries, they've had nine. We've been somewhat careless with our passes, that's why we've maintained only 92% accuracy. I do expect an improvement in the second half. Um, it's been a very easy game, and to be fair, Vincent Company, the way his sides play, it does look very easy at times. So please let me know down below what your thoughts and opinions are on these tactics. The expected goals is 2.2 compared to just 0.0. .0. Okay, that, that's that's a that's a low blow. I'm sorry. Uh, the passes are 65 to 22, and the tackles is 11 to 0. So very you know proactive when losing the ball, when trying to win the ball back, getting in the pass range, trying to initiate that aggressive breakdown of the opposition's play and more so i think it's been on full display so far in the tactics as you'll see there a lot of our position has been maintained in the central zones with the two wider midfielders and even the fullbacks coming inside and making inroads into those central areas of the field and that is due to the fact that our width is set to 60 which is quite good 
um, but a lot of our possession has been maintained in those central areas of the pitch, whereas a lot of their possession has been maintained in their own box, as well as one or two darker patches in our own area when they have been trying to attack although it hasn't been very successful. Okay, we are going to press aggressively here. Team press has been initiated. Thomas Muller, Musiala, as well as Matisse Tell all getting on the score sheet in that first half. Sorry, not Matisse Tell. My bad. The likes of uh, Serge Gnabry. Nicely done there from Pavlovich. Tell lays it off into Guerrero, who just finds a very easy ball into, wow! Into Musiala, who stings the palms of the goalkeeper. And the goalkeeper, yet again, equal to the attacking threat. They've dealt with it nicely yet again. We are just going to fire it out wide. What can we do here? Just switch the play to the back post. And it's a great save yet again from the goalkeeper. Wow, this time it's Sasha Bui stinging the, the, the gloves or the legs of the keeper. We're going to whip it in. Potentially. Nope. Back in there. And we are just going to switch it to the back post. Region! And we were looking for a slightly more attacking area to try and, you know, find. But it's fine. It's okay. We are going to just rotate the play. Rotate possession. And unfortunately, Musiala's broken, broken down our offensive approach. Although Guerrero's press high, he's pressed wide. And we have won the ball back. Musiala plays in the likes of Thomas Muller. There we go. It's very unfortunate, but it is 4-0 and it's an absolute battering. But that's just Bayern Munich's preseason, people. It's been battering after battering. Even against Spurs, they were very good. They conceded some sloppy chances. Two of them were down to Eric Dyer. That that says all you need to know. <laughs> but they have been very dominant with with Vincent Company's tactics. You know, like he he is going to be a success. Uh, I I know it. I see it. You you saw it when when he was with Bernie. Like they were playing some very good football. He just lacked quality, and the players that he did have at you know his disposal were either not good enough or they were very young and they were still developing. So a company does have a track record of developing players, a very positive style of play, a very aggressive, you know, modern style of, of football with, with the way that he approaches football. So, yeah, we, we will see quite a lot of it on display this season and I do think that he could be, you know, a, a great surprise for the upcoming season. Anyway, Matisse Tell this time, looking to cut wide, bang, bang, and bang! Oh, that would have been absolutely outstanding. They are suggesting the likes of Kingsley Coman. And I will say, Kingsley Coman, when he did come on for, I don't know how, how long it was against Spurs in the second game, um, he, he did have more of a, a role suited to the likes of Gnabry, opposed to cutting, cutting inside and being an inside forward. So he would look to hug the left side touchline and be more of a natural winger that had pace. So yeah, that, that, that's, that's what I took away from that Kingsley Coman little cameo versus Spurs. Abdovich just shielding the back line, making sure that he doesn't get broken down or nothing gets intercepted. Just back to the goalkeeper. Calm as you like, boys. Invite that press, playing it out beautifully. Back into the midfield zone. Good ball. Matisse Tull into the likes of Guerrero. What can Guerrero do? Is he going to cut it back? Yes, he's probably going to cut it back. Back post area and the likes of big man Thomas Muller is there. Some good combination play in the build up to that. And uh, yeah, it, it's just a drubbing at the end of the day. But these tactics are fantastic, even against the bigger sides. Lovely done. Lovely jubbly into the back of the net and wow oh wow 6 0 just like that. These tactics are fantastic and they don't just work against the smaller sides, believe it. Um, when trialing them out and making sure that I was doing everything correctly and trying to implement certain things, we absolutely battered the likes of Dortmund, the likes of Spurs. You know, I played Wolfsburg, I think I ended up winning like 4 2 or 4 1 or some, something like that. And it's just complete and utter dominance from the side in these tactics. So, you guys need to let me know down below do you like them and how have they fared for you please of course we will be making an updated version of these at some point in the next few months obviously there will be different roles different instructions for certain players like harry kane like kingsley coman if he stays potentially any new signs that might come through the door so yeah we will be making a, a newer version once things kick into gear once the season starts and it could be it should be and it is going to be seven no Ah, uh, well, I, I, I take no pride in beating down a third division team with the 
one of the best teams, if not the best team in Germany. I really don't, but you know, it, it is what it is. Sticking to the preseason theme and all that good stuff. So, yo, a 7-0 dropping. So as the game's drawn to a close, we maintained around 68% position, which I think went up from half time. It went up by 2%. We had 14 shots to their zero. I mean, our defensive line did deal with all of their attacks. Manuel Neuer just stood there for fun. He had a few touches of the ball himself. Played out from the back, looking to establish that good offensive platform. But rarely, it, it was it was not really a, a defensive testing situation that we really had. So we had 20 tackles to their zero. They didn't put in one single tackle. Our pass accuracy did go down by 4%, which is not great. But we won 7-0, so I can't really complain too much about that. You guys will have to let me know down below what your thoughts and opinions are of Vincent Company's preseason tactics for FT24. Anyways, until the next time, until the next one, I hope you guys have a smashing goddamn day, and I'm out of here. Peace.